Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles and welcome to another market structure struggle. Today we're talking about an oligopoly slash duopoly market and price determination in an oligopoly or a duopoly market. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's get right into it. For the market characteristics, I'm going to talk about an oligopoly and then in parentheses, I'll show what specifics for a duopoly. So for example, in an oligopoly, we have few firms and duopoly, we have exactly two firms. In either case, in an oligopoly, they are selling either a similar product or the same product. The market is going to look very similar to a monopoly except each firm doesn't have total market power they sort of split the market power based on the number of firms in the market so each firm has a ton of market power because there are not many firms in this market or only two firms in this market there are lots of barriers to entry they're not impossible to overcome it is possible to enter this market but it's really really hard so an example of an oligopoly or a duopoly is the aviation or the plane market so you have Boeing and Airbus which are the two major players you might say well you have a a third player like Gulfstream or Mitsubishi who make planes, but there are very few firms who make airplanes. It's an oligopoly market. Each of those firms has a ton of market power, even though neither of them is a monopoly in the market. For the graphical representation, this is going to look very similar to the monopoly market. We have a demand curve, a marginal revenue curve. We've got a marginal cost curve. Just like before, we're setting marginal cost equal to marginal revenue to find the quantity. We're following that quantity all the way up to the demand curve, and that's going to tell you the price that prevails in the oligopoly market. You can see also on this graph that where marginal cost equals the demand curve. I've tried to put this right here. This is the Pareto optimal or the perfect competition price and quantity. So what you can see is that we definitely have a lower quantity than in a Pareto optimal or perfect competition market. Both the average total cost in blue and the average variable cost in light purple are below the demand curve, which means that in both the short run and the long run firms in an oligopoly or duopoly market, Market are going to be making positive economic profit. Now, when we talk about an oligopoly or specifically a duopoly, there's going to be interaction between those two or few firms. There are two different ways to model the strategic interaction between either two firms or a few firms in a duopoly slash oligopoly. We're going to talk about these more in depth in separate videos, but I want to give you a quick overview. So you have the Bertrand model and the Corno model. In the Bertrand model, each of those firms is choosing prices. You can get a perfectly competitive outcome out of a Bertrand model for both two firms and other number of firms that are small. You can have a finite or infinite version of the game. We'll talk about both of those in separate videos. The crux of the Bertrand model is that you are setting your prices simultaneously with all the other firms in the market. Now contrast that with the Cournot model where the firms are setting quantity simultaneously in the market. Again, you can have a finite or infinite version. We'll talk about each of those. The Cournot model really only applies to two firms and the quantity and price that you get is somewhere between perfectly competitive and monopoly, which is what you might expect, given that, again, the number of firms in the market is somewhere between perfect competition and monopoly. And again, in the Cournot model, you're choosing quantities. Hopefully, this gives you a general sense of how a duopoly slash oligopoly market works. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.